and Dr. Kai Jie Zhang from National Taiwan University Hospital Union Branch. It is very honorable to be invited by Taiwan Epilepsy Society to give a talk. And today I will share my experience about the artifacts during EEG exams. I think most people who are engaged in neurology have at least some patient as being a detective. We were trained to have a localized before we have a differential diagnosis and we must to collect trivial clues from patients either by history, by neurological examinations, and even by physical examination. I was taught by our teacher, Professor Hong, to, to evaluate the operation of shoes to determine patient's gait. The lesson is we should not miss clues even if they are not arising from the physiology process of the subjects. The ideal is similar in dealing with EEG. Some people may think that the EEG can only help us to identify ectal focus. That is, they focus on spikes, sharp waves, or any suspect of criminal. Experienced EEG readers may tell us, you should read the people before you read their spikes. We may tolerate some sore waves if the age is very young or very old. We may also anticipate asymmetry in some subjects, for example, if they, are, if they have bridge. However, the waves leaking from bridge usually looks very like sharp waves, even if it is not so outstanding. There are also so many physiological variants that can mimic epiphone discharges. For example, breathing sharp waves, wiki spikes, or phantom spikes. Of course, the artifact can also and usually disturb our reading, and we are taught to find them and then eradicate them in our mental image. However, just as I said before, we should not give up any clues, even if it is not from the EEG itself. The artifact can also tell us a lot of information. I summarize the four major domains of EEG in this slide. The background tells us who the subject is. The abnormal discharges, including epileptic discharges or slow waves, are able to tell us what happens to the brain. The variants usually occur in association with the arousal status of the patients, that is, the timing of receiving EEG. Finally, the artifacts are able to tell us the environment growth. Only by combining all the information, we are able to guess the true condition of the patient, even if we did not see them directly. That is what I mean, being a detective. So I will give you some examples. Let's see this EEG. At first glance, what is your intuition? Oh, the EEG is such a mess, and let me just take it to see if it will be better in the next page, right? This is not the case. I will show you how informative of this EEG. We may see many traces are overflow in this EEG. The voltage is so big that could be could not be shown in the screen. Besides, the frequency of the overflow is very slow. Therefore, to eliminate this artifact, what we should do is to decrease the time constant or to increase the threshold of low frequency filter. After adjusting the time constant to 0 0.03 seconds, the EEG becomes more easy reading. If you forget how to transform time constant and the threshold of how of low frequency filter, you may just remember their multiplied product is 0 0.15. So latent time constant of 0 0.03 seconds in price we discuss slow wave less than 5 Hz. But the key concept is not only to make a readable EEG, but also to think about what you have given up. If we think about a large amplitude, very slow frequency waves, 
is caused a common artifact from sweat. The sweat is rich in electrolyte and is easy to build a bridge between electrodes. This results in a sausage-like background swaying of EEG. We can eliminate the sweat artifact by just decreasing the time constant, but we should pay attention that slow wave will not disappear under this, adjust under this adjustment. Unless the air condition in your EEG room is broken, most healthy people do not have such artifacts. You may ask your technician if the room temperature may interfere the EEG, or you may consider the subjects have a hyperhidrosis, that is, they may have a disturbance in autonomic nerve system. Next, let us reconsider our modified EEG. One prominent feature of this EEG is the high-frequency waves, which are clustered and occur in a regular, irregular manner. I think the term regular, irregular is from EKG, but it is a good feature of physiological artifacts. On the contrary, if the artifact is regular, regular, which occurs in a very stable interval, the artifact is more likely arising from environmental machine. The cluster high frequency waves suggest muscle artifacts or surface ENG in the whole head. The period is around every 1 to 2 seconds, so we just forget epilepsy and consider domains of involuntary movement. We can analyze these artifacts. It is too slow to be a tremor and too regular to be ticks. How about stereotypism in, in psychiatric conditions such as delirium? We must notice the arterial muscle art artifact is limited in EEG traces, but not in EKG. So what comes into my head is the patient may have a dyskinesia, probably oral or facial, but may also influence nearby EEG leads. Muscle artifacts may also in other conditions such as myoclonus. We may divide this kind of artifacts according to their occurring frequency. In addition, if our technician performed any arousal maneuver, we can also see whether the pair artifacts is suppressible, just as how we differentiate involuntary movements in movement disorders. Finally, we reach the background of this EEG. We may see the patient have tachycardia at around 100 beats per minute. There are a generalized rhythmic theta range activity. I use the term theta wave to describe its range of frequency. However, if we consider a physiology of such generalized rhythmic activity, we may consider it may be a very slow variant of background alpha activity. We have some differential diagnosis of slow alpha rhythm. We know that the background may be only 6 Hz in normal child, become, become faster in adults but slow again in older people. In patients with head failure, with heart failure, the background alpha may also slow down due to decreased brain perfusion. In addition, people talking, taking sodium channel drugs such as kapamazepine, vein towing, have been reported to have a slower alpha activities. So let's have a brief summary. The background of the EEG shows slow alpha and the tachycardia, which may suggest heart disturbance or medical overuse. We did not actually see prominent abnormal discharges in this EEG and although I did not show in, in my EEG cut, the patient as well as the EEG was not responsive to a rosal maneuver, which indicated the patient may have a poor consciousness. 
The artifact told us the patient had a bowel movement such as tardiskinesia and overt sweating due to autonomic dysfunction. But put them together, we have a diagnosis of fatal intoxication. Of course, it is not easy to make a direct diagnosis only by this EEG. But if you already have a diagnosis and take a look to your EEG, you may find every component is interesting. By the way, when we talk about muscle artifacts, there was a question since I learned how to read EEG. In our hospital, we usually order an EEG exam for patients complaining headache if the headache looks like not so serious. Of course, 9 out of 10 EEG were normal and the sound may contain muscle artifacts which we may regard it as muscle spasm of the scalp. Is it true? In 1994, Jensen performed a study comparing different kinds of headache and their surface EEG from EEG. It seems only chronic tension headache will have permanent muscle artifacts, while episodic tension headache and the migraines didn't. In addition, the headache frequency must reach more than 180 days per year that will more permanent artifacts. Generally speaking, EEG muscle artifacts is not so useful unless the headache is very severe.